Hello students, welcome. I am Aditya Vardhan from adichemistry.com. In this presentation, I am going to explain the structure of xenon tetrafluoride. It is for those who struggle to get the concept in the classroom and eager to learn new methods. I encourage you to ask questions during the video presentation. You may write them up in the comment section below and get reply from me. I will attend them one by one. Let us start with the simplest approach that is by using Lewis model. In xenon tetrafluoride, the xenon atom makes four bonds with four fluorine atoms. It requires four unpaid electrons while fluorine atoms also contribute one electron each. The four covalent bonds are formed between xenon and fluorine atoms. Hello, who is this? He is Mr. Weiss. I am introducing you with Mr. Weiss. He has lots of questions. Let us see what is his question now. He is asking, how do we know that each fluorine atom contributes one electron only? Yes, this is a good question. Okay, now let us see the electronic configuration of fluorine. In the ground state, the outer electronic configuration can be written as 2s2, 2p5. And you can clearly see there is one unpaid electron. And you know that every atom requires one unpaid electron to form a normal covalent bond. Then what about xenon? It is forming four bonds. Let us see the outer electronic configuration of xenon in ground state. It is 5s2. 5p6 and 5d0 but there are no unpaired electrons at all then how is it possible for xenon to form four bonds you know that atoms can be excited to higher levels by absorbing energy from the surroundings in this process the electrons from the ground state are transferred to the higher levels in the present case two of the electrons from 5p level are excited to 5d level thus the new electronic configuration in the excited state is 5s2, 5p4 and 5d2 instead of 5s2, 5p6, 5d0. It is actually the second excited state. You can clearly see there are four unpaired electrons. By using these four unpaired electrons, xenon now can form four bonds in the second excited state. Now moving on to the hybridization part. According to Linus Pauling, who proposed valence bond theory, atoms may undergo hybridization before bond formation to confer more stability to the molecule that is going to be formed. In this case also, xenon undergoes sp3d2 hybridization by mixing 1s, 3p and 2d orbitals in the second excited state. Thus we get 6 sp3d2 hybrid orbitals which are arranged in octahedral geometry as shown in the picture. Once again Mr. Weiss, ok now what is your question? Ok your question is what is hybridization? Ok, now let us recall what is hybridization. Here is a brief summary. It is intermixing of two or more atomic orbitals yielding new orbitals otherwise known as hybrid orbitals. The hybrid orbitals are identical in shape with same energy. That is why they are referred to as degenerate. Hybrid orbitals are oriented in space so as to minimize repulsions between them. 
you can also get more information on hybridization in one of my other video presentations you can search hybridization or the chemistry on youtube now let me explain exactly what happens in sp3d2 hybridization on the screen you are now presented with the orbitals which participate in the sp3d2 hybridization the first one is s orbital it is spherical in shape now these are three p orbitals dumbbell in shape first one is px and py and pz orbitals which are oriented along the x y and z axis respectively finally two of the t orbitals here i have taken d x square minus y square and d z square orbitals these five orbitals from the fifth level of xenon are mixed to form new hybrid orbitals these new hybrid orbitals are identical in shape and degenerate they are also arranged in octahedral geometry so what is octahedral geometry this is an octahedral arrangement an octahedron is a delta hedron with eight triangular faces and six corners the sp3d2 hybrid orbitals are projected towards these corners in this geometry four orbitals are arranged in a square plane by making 90 degrees of angles with each other for the sake of convenience we can refer to them as equatorial orbitals the remaining two are arranged above and below the square plane one above the plane another below the plane we can refer to them as axial orbitals now let us fill up the electrons into these sp3d2 hybrid orbitals you can see there are eight electrons filling up of electrons in hybrid orbitals also follow pauli's exclusion principle as well as hund's rule of maximum multiplicity since the hybrid orbitals are degenerate each orbital must be filled with one electron then only pairing is allowed thus the six hybrid orbitals are filled with one electron each now two electrons are left with one of these will pair up with the electron in axial orbital above the plane and the last one will enter into the axial orbital below the plane thus the equatorial orbitals are half filled while the axial orbitals are full filled now the question is is this the only arrangement possible can't we fill them in another way no there is one more arrangement possible watch this one the last electron will enter into the equatorial orbital instead of the axial now the question is which one is more favored in the case of first one the angle between the full fill orbitals is 180 degrees while in the right side arrangement the angle is just 90 degrees hence the repulsions are minimum in the first case and hence this arrangement is more stable whereas the repulsions are relatively more in second case and hence it is a less stable arrangement therefore the first one is more favored and we will continue with this one now what is left with we have to make bonds the half filled hybrid orbitals will make sigma bonds with fluorine atoms as shown
Now there are two kinds of electron pairs around the xenon atom. There are four bond pairs projecting towards the corners of a square plane, while there are two lone pairs in the axial positions. Finally, what is the structure and shape of xenon tetrafluoride? I am now showing the solid lines for bond pairs. The structure of XeF4 is referred to as octahedral with two lone pairs, whereas the shape is referred to as square planar. One should remember that the structure includes lone pairs while the shape includes only the arrangement of bond pairs. The angle between the bond pairs is 90 degrees. Last but not least, an advice from Mr. Weiss. Raise your queries in the comment section. If you have any problem in understanding this topic, write them in the comment section below the video. You can also ask for video presentations on other topics too. Ok now this is the end of presentation. Visit adhikemistry.com for more video presentations and other information. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Like this video. At least write a comment below this video. All the best.